G'day folks and welcome to Gourmet's Shed and this week we're looking at uh, doing a bit of weathering and uh, this time uh, I'm having a crack at it uh, with uh, soft pastels. Uh, this is a little tin of uh, Montmartre soft, soft pastels uh, and they're in skin tint colours and uh, they also have other ones, uh, this is Montmartre again uh, which I bought online and uh, they are grey tints so they vary from white to absolute pitch black and uh, I've used these uh, these ones in particular for weathering buildings um, and uh, but that's another story so today we're going to have a crack at uh, uh, a rather battered uh, brake van I've got and so it doesn't really matter if I, if I uh, make it any worse than it is so I've, I've had a uh, preliminary uh, test on this method I came up with and uh, I don't know whether other people do it. I've never, I haven't researched this sort of thing before but uh, we're using those soft pastels as I mentioned and some cheap hairspray uh, and, and a brush and uh, a little br blade for scraping. So um, without further ado we'll, we'll sort of start explaining what we're doing here. Right folks, this is what the wagon looks like in its uh, untouched state, although this is a battered wagon. So we've got all this metal work etc down the sort of bottom parts of the wagon and we move up into wood panel a bit further up. So uh, that's what it should look like in its untouched state. So I'll just turn it over and I'll show you what I've done. Now here's the other side and if this will stay focused you can see that this wagon is uh, practically falling apart with rust and dirt and muck right down to uh, the wheel act the wheel housing the axle housings and that sort of thing now this was very simply and easily done and it's very cheap and I'll show you what I did now it's up to you, you might come up with a better way of doing this and certainly masking tape may help if you don't want to sort of encroach up onto the, the wood panel part but I'm not too worried about this wagon because it needs a bit of an overhaul anyway. So we'll turn it over and we'll have a crack at it. Right, here's, here's the coloured palette that I've got to work with and uh, you know I don't think the pinks are much use to us at all, you never know, <laughs> or the purpley pink. Um, but you can see where I've got most of my use uh, down here. Uh, this is a, a, a brown, this is another type of brown and the black has had a fair bit of use. This is the one I use for rust colour but you could also use its neighbour here which um, looks a bit sort of yellowy there but it's actually sort of a rust colour. I don't know whether these colours will uh, be truly represented on the video but that's beside the point I suppose at this stage. Anyway, yeah, these, one, these ones get a bit of a hiding because they're use, used the most. And they're the most useful for weathering because, you know, they represent dirt, soot, grime, mud, uh, rust, that sort of thing. And um, <coughs> here's the other side of the wagon ready. Now, I've put it in a little takeaway food container there. And the idea is that that will catch anything that uh, <coughs> goes beyond... Um, beyond the wagon and falls down. This stuff makes a bit of a mess so we don't want to make too much of a mess in here. Okay folks now um, this stuff has to be done fairly quickly uh, because we don't want the uh, hairspray to dry out too quickly on us so um, what I'm going to have to do is uh, set the camera up 
to uh, look at the tray. I'm going to have to pick up the wagon and give it a quick spray because I don't want to spray it near my rolling stock here. So you should be doing this in, a, in an area that's well away from your rolling stock. Um, my shed's a bit of a tip at the moment. So, and the light's good in here and it's night time outside so we're working in here to sort of uh, film it a bit better. So you're going to have to show me a little bit of grace here and there uh, so I can do things. So what I'll do is get the camera set up uh, on the work area here but I'll actually hold the wagon away from there to spray it and then we'll get into it with the pastels and the uh, and the blade and hopefully hopefully it'll all show up properly. So let's have a crack at that, eh? Here we go. Okay, as I said folks, we're going to have to work quickly. So I've got my colours set up. They're out of the uh, little tray. I've got black and the rust colour and a brown. So what I'm going to do now is pick up this wagon. I'm going to give it a quick spray. Um, maybe we'll just do down one end for the moment. Um, I'll give it a quick spray with a hairspray and then we'll get into scraping the powders on. And I'm going to scrape the powders on with a blade and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So here we go. Right, just give it a quick spray. I'm just spraying down the bottom side of it and hopefully you can see that it's a bit damp there. Now I get the rust colour and I just scrape the blade along the pastel and just put it on here and there. More or less in a random way I suppose. Now I'll go for the brown, put a bit of that on. And that can spread a bit further because it's like grime. And we'll get a bit of black for soot. Now, as this powder's going on, it's um, it may be clumping in certain areas, but that's good, especially for the rust part because it looks like it's sort of that crusty sort of rust. So that area is done. Now we'll just have to let that dry, and we'll see how it comes up. It's it's drying quite quickly actually. Uh, we'll just leave that for a little bit and we'll see how it goes. Okay folks, we're just about there now. So it's dried off. It's uh, looking a bit ordinary now. Uh, poor old wagon. And uh, to just sort of um, have less of that sort of crusty effect, I suppose, if you like, you can work it a bit with a brush if you want to, to sort of um, take away any residue. <coughs> and uh, I hope you can see this. So this is a reasonably stiff brush and this will sort of soften some of those areas a bit you know it only takes a bit of a light touch and uh, of course if you think you need to soften it a bit more that's fine you could probably even go over some of these areas with the brown a bit more if you wanted to so what we'll do is we'll have a closer look at that <coughs> and uh, see what you think Okay, here we are. That's how it's come up. Now that, that side's still a little um, sticky probably. So what I'll do is turn it over and I'll just show you something on the other side that's dry. Okay folks, this is a bit tricky holding the camera with my left hand and doing this with my right finger, which you can see is clean. Now just rub that and we'll see what comes off. Nothing. So it stays on pretty well. It's, it's very effective actually. Actually I think this side's better than the other side. But um, what we might do is have a go at the roof. What do you reckon? I might use some of the, uh, the greys etc on the roof. If you have a look at the roof, it's pretty ordinary already anyway. I mean it's filthy isn't it? Look at that. It's an old model that's been knocked around. So maybe we'll have a go at the roof as well. <laughs> Start this thing and sort of make it really dilapidated. All right, so we'll get set up for that. Hang on a minute. Okay, folks, slightly different method for the roof because we don't necessarily want crusty on the roof. So um, I'm using my grey tints here to start with. So I've got this sort of, uh, let's call it charcoal grey. And I'll, I'll just start putting, scraping some of this onto the roof because... Um, 
you know, this wagon's had a hard life, hasn't it? So that's probably enough of that colour. Now, instead of um, spraying with a hairspray straight away, I'll just get my brush and just work this in a bit. Just grub it up. And basically, it's, it's a subtle sort of um, change in colour with this sort of method. Now you might not notice too much difference there, but that is grubbed up a bit more. I'll get some of my black uh, and I'll put some of that on. And with it, scraping it over the top, it's sort of this random effect. Uh, you get an intensity in certain areas and it's less intense in others. So we work that in a bit firmer with the brush this time. But again, it's sort of a random sort of effect. And uh, it's coming along nicely. You sort of break, brush off the excess. And you'll notice I'm still working over the tray, so I'm not really making a mess of the, the shed here. It's falling into the tray. Now, we might try a bit of brown. A bit of that on there. Here and there, and we'll work that in as well. Now this is decidedly more grubby than it was when we started out, but it's not completely grubby. Now, I've left a little bit of residue on there, just a bit. Now, we might just add the odd fleck here and there. I've, I've got a uh, sort of a creamy yellow. Very light, very lightly, just to insinuate some sort of staining. Uh, bird poo, if you like. Well, maybe something else in preference. Um, what else can we try? Maybe even a... a just a hint of the rust, but it's unlikely we'd get rust up here as much as we got down below. But the rust colour, I'll just work, sort of work it in a bit, just to sort of mix up the palette a bit more. And I'll leave those white flecks pretty much as they are. Uh, <clears throat> and now I'm going to give it a, a sealing coat with the hairspray. So just give me a tick to do that. Now, it looks all nice and shiny at the moment, so we'll have to give that <coughs> a little time to uh, dry. Uh, but the stains that were already there have actually sort of um, softened a bit, and the other work that I've put in here is sort of blended in with those. It's, it's a nice grubby look. So we'll just give that a tick to dry and then we'll come back to it. Right folks, I'm still not happy with it, so I'm going to give it another go with the um, <coughs> charcoal grey, I think. And um, I'll try the, um, I'll try giving it a coat first of hairspray, and then I'll do the, uh, the grey on that. I want a bit more uh, texture to it, I want to roughen it up a bit more. So that's what I'll do. So, we'll get the hairspray out and... Uh, Give it a go. Right. Now we get the grey. <coughs> and just um, work it over the top here. And what I think I'll do this time is uh, let it dry and then come back with a brush and try a bit of brown on there as well, I think. And maybe a bit more soot. So we'll let that dry and then come back and work it a bit with the brush. 
Okay, it's mostly dry, still a little tacky, but that might be all right actually. Now I'll just start roughing it up a bit here with the brush and smearing it a bit. You're getting some distressed areas here where I'm sort of going back to the original grey. That's all right though. Okay, that's better. Now hopefully you can see that. And what I'll do is um, come down onto it a bit uh, with the camera so you can have a better look at it. Yeah, I like that. Okay, alright, let's have a closer look at it. Okay folks, here it is. Hopefully this thing will stay focused. And you've got the sort of um, a bit of the crusty effect on the roof but also it looks distressed and uh, I mean you, you can muck around with these things for ages this will pretty much all rub off if you needed to and you could start again if you wanted to but I, I think that's a pretty fair representation of a fairly um, weathered wagon that's had a hard life okay folks it probably looks better on the railway as you can see what sort of effect we've got here and uh, the roof's dried off now and uh, this is how it's come up if this thing will stay focused let's hope it is I think that's not too bad for a very short time it took to do it really there you are. Pastels, they've got to be chalk pastels, not the uh, oil pastels, uh, otherwise known as soft pastels, and uh, hairspray, a brush, and uh, something to scrape the pastel with. You could even um, scrape the pastels into little containers to create your own weathering powders. And anything that falls in the tray, you can tip back into your little containers and save it for later on. So there you are, folks. It's as simple as that. And I believe you can achieve a pretty good result. You know, if you just work at it, practice with it, um, I'd suggest you go for some old uh, wagon that you don't have much uh, time for and uh, practice on that first to uh, sort of perfect your technique. Um, this has only been... Uh, a quick uh, sort of demo from me because I only just thought of it a while ago. I thought, wonder how it would go with hairspray. And uh, the stuff I'm using is uh, what is it? Uh, it comes from Aldi, and it's extreme hold stuff, uh, but it seems to do the job. You might um, get a better result with a matte spray sealer uh, because then there would be no shine whatsoever. Uh, that that would be something worth looking at as well. Uh, which is uh, now we, we're sort of coming back to a technique that you use with uh, weathering powders but that's a whole other story uh, anyway that's just my take on it and I think you get a good result so um, I'll see you next week cheers Gourmet.